America needs a tidal wave of the old time religion. I have sinned against you. How dare you! We have no need to doubt God. The heart of Babylon is preparing the nations to receive the Antichrist. I didn't even build that house with money from the church. I built it with money from my book. I don't make this stuff up. Repenting of your sins. It is a moral issue. They got together and swore a pact to the devil. I just enjoy seeing people worship, <sighs> praising God. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Believe It or Not. And guess who's back in the motherfucking house? Um, is it you? Yeah, I'm back in the motherfucking house. With the uh, um... Uh, yeah, we're. I'm back in the studio. Do you think we? Do you think everyone just left after that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just want to say that uh, I do not endorse the views of Trevor. Oh. In this instance. Oh. Uh, I feel that you know he he want he made a bold statement. I did. But he's back. He was just excited. Yeah, I was just very excited to be back uh, mm-hmm. in the studio mm-hmm. recording. Damien is part of my bubble now. Yeah. The bubble is getting a little bigger, Mm -hmm. but we're still keeping it bubbled. We're still keeping it bubbled, Mm -hmm. but we're in each other's bubble. I made Trevor take a dip in a big 50-gallon drum of hand sanitizer when Mm -hmm. he came in. And I found all the little cuts on my body, and it really Mm -hmm. stung, but it was worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was surprised you had so many. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I got a really good good, uh, segue here. Who who would have predicted that that I'd be back? Uh, a psychic, a uh, prophet, a prophet. There we go. I like how you had to say that you had a segue yeah. rather than just going into the segue. Yeah. So you <laughs> you stopped a segue to segue into the segue. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's alright. Yeah, I guess I liked it. Um, uh, let's start with some Bible verses, and then I'll mm-hmm. explain. Uh, well, you'll probably tell from Bible verses what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> right. Okay. This is from Deuteronomy eighteen verse mm-hmm. twenty. It says. The prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So false prophets? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who give lying divinations. They shall not be in counsel of the people, nor be enrolled in the register of the house of Israel, nor shall they enter the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord God. That's from Ezekiel 13, verse 9. Don't say false prophecies. Right. Um, so here's some things the Bible said that, that are come false true that prophecies. are false prophecies. Right. Um, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure all prophecies are false mm-hmm. uh, just by their very nature. Oh, yeah. Um, anytime that a prophecy, quote unquote, comes true, um, it doesn't. Yeah. It's coincidence. Yeah. It's happenstance. And it's people ascribing value to something that had nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's 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 counting the hits and ignoring the misses. It's the Nostradamus effect. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Where yeah. it's just like, well, Nostradamus said that this would happen. No, he didn't. He said that a guy would do this. And you're like, well, that must be this. Yeah. Exactly. You're equating you, things you're with f- something. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll talk about some false prophecies in the Bible and some false prophecies since the Bible was written. And oh, who, uh, who wrote the Bible? Uh, God. Mm. Well, a lot of people. Uh, they say Moses wrote the first five books, but he died in like the third one. Right. So um, probably not. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, just when you go to the bookstore, oh, I mean, yeah. when you were you, when we used to be allowed to go to the bookstore, yeah. Um, they would have like uh, you know like number one best selling author, mm-hmm. uh, you know like Stephen King or yeah. Uh, Dean Koontz, I guess. Yeah, it's probably just under God. But you never saw, like, God. Yeah. Heather's pick. Uh, author pick. God. <laughs> in, uh, in Ezekiel, <laughs> the same uh, the same thing that said, if you're a false prophet, um, you're not welcome to heaven. The same book said that Nebuchadnezzar would destroy Tyre, the, the city of Tyre. Uh, T-Y-R-E. Um, this is a picture I'll just show Damien of Tyre. Today? Today. Just it's doing quite well. Well, okay. To be fair, just because he said he was going to destroy it doesn't mean that it couldn't come back. A lot of cities were destroyed. That's that true. Came back, but he never destroyed it. He never destroyed it. Yeah. It oh just, no. It just yeah. Um, also, uh, uh, Ezekiel said that he, Egypt would be a barren wasteland. Um, that that Nebuchadnezzar would destroy Egypt. Well, isn't a lot of it desert anyway? Yeah, but it's still it's still a place. Yeah. Um, 
I'm finding, okay, so one of the things you all notice with prophecies in the Bible that uh-huh. haven't come true or even ones that did, you know, happen, I think there's three main categories. It's we're going to destroy your city or country. Right. God's going to return and destroy everything. Or don't worry, it's going to be fine. See, my, the other thing about this too is that with no time frame, without them saying like yeah. this will happen in 10 years, you you have so many opportunities yeah. to just say like this is what it was. Exactly. Because it's been 2,000 years. Yeah. So there's so many times when just time would have done some of this stuff. Exactly. Regardless of your quote unquote prophecy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's city of Damascus and Isaiah. Um, it said, uh, yeah, they said that the city of Damascus would be destroyed. It's a huge city still it was never destroyed. Right. Um, <laughs> there was a prophecy in the, in Ezekiel too, that, uh, said Israel will live in peace with its neighbors from that point <laughs> on. <laughs> that um, really hasn't occurred. Yeah. It's, uh, that's a, that's a that's its whole th- episode, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, in Samuel, Second Samuel seven verse thirteen, it says the Davidic kingly line would never end. Did it? It it did. Well, Christians would say it didn't because Jesus continued it on. That's their apologetic because Jesus was from the line of David and he's right. king forever. So, right. It, so they'll say it. King yeah. forever? Yeah. That's not fair. Not, that isn't fair. No, give, we should have a someone else a, yeah. yeah. Give someone else a chance. Yeah, I'm also more about a, a democratically elected... God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should have uh, God elections. Yeah, exactly. In Matthew 16, verse 27, Jesus says that there's people who are among them that would still be there when uh, he returns. So the second coming was supposed to happen when people there were still alive. <laughs> so unless there's like somebody in there right. who's immortal, who's just still wandering around, mm-hmm. um, there's... Well, people in the Bible lived to be very old, that's true. didn't they? Yeah, that's true. I think Methuselah was nearly a thousand, so... How do you prove that you were almost a thousand? Because yeah. everyone else is dead. Yeah, exactly. And at that time, I feel like you could just go to a different town and say, I'm a thousand years old. Yeah, and they're like, oh, that guy's a thousand years wow. old. How do we know that? He said he was a thousand years old. Are you going to doubt this man? (laughs) He's a respectable gentleman. And then like people point to certain things in the Bible and they say, these are prophecies Mm -hmm. come true. And then you, when you look into it, it's like, no, they're really not like Jesus being born uh, in Bethlehem was supposed to fulfill a prophecy from the old Testament saying he would be born in Bethlehem in Matthew. When they said that they must've misread because it actually translates that they would he be born of the tribe of Bethlehem, uh, which was a clan of Judah, which was not the city of Bethlehem. Right. So they got the wrong location because they were trying to fit a prophecy. And it wasn't even the right people. It wasn't even the right people. And then they made it so that he the family moved to Nazareth, so Jesus would be considered a Nazarene yeah. um, to fulfill the prophecy that Jesus was a Nazarene. But they actually can't find any prophecy in the Old Testament that said Jesus, like the Messiah would be Nazarene, but they went through all these hoops to like say that they fulfilled this prophecy. So it it must have just been some other non-biblical prophecy that they had to jump through hoops to as well to... That we don't have anymore. That we don't have anymore to fulfill this prophecy. So Christians use Bible prophecy as evidence for... God being real all the time, but it's always just these like mm-hmm. stretches of, and they ignore the misses. Like, well, I mean, I feel that's trying to prove most things yeah, in the Bible. It's true. Prophecies yeah. or not. Yeah. It's just huge stretches uh, again, but that, it, that is faith, right? Yeah. Is taking those huge stretches yeah. and just believing it. Oh yeah. No, it's true. So, cause you're, yeah. When you're, in the faith, you're only looking for confirmation. Right. Like I remember when I was first starting to question things, I came up across a James Randi video and yeah. I started watching it and I had to turn it off. Like, cause mm-hmm. I, my immediate reaction was to turn it off and never watch it again. Right. And then a couple of days later, I'm like, so all I, I just care about confirming. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what it seems to be is yeah. that it ignores things that disprove or challenge those ideas yeah i mean i i get that a lot with 
the supernatural. I'm saying they don't exist, but if there was something that could show me that any of these things did, yeah, I would believe it. Yeah. I've been very open about that. Yeah. The fact is, there's been nothing yeah. that has ever been brought up to make me believe this. And that's what that's what James Randi was all about, was that he's just he had the million dollar prize, could prove that any of these things were real, you could win a million dollars. Yeah. And he did that for what, like thirty years? Yeah. And nobody nobody's nobody ever claimed it. Yeah. Because they can't prove it. Yeah. Because it's not real. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so and that these were just a few of the Bible prophecies that that didn't come true, but there's a lot mm-hmm. of them. Um, and then since then, there's been a lot of prophecies about when the world will end. That I feel like that's been a theme for a while. That's now. been a theme for a very long time, like probably before even like yeah, pre Christianity. There's always just been uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean the whole the whole thing like 2012 with the Aztec yeah. calendar and all that stuff as well. Mm-hmm. It's just like well, it's probably just the end of the calendar. Yeah, exactly. And it, like Y2K, people are freaking out. That's the yeah. end of the world. That one, I f- I feel less like. Oh, the Aztec calendar is done, so that must be the end of the world. Yeah. The Y2K one, I, I can understand. It was because it was something that people didn't necessarily know. It, yeah. was, it was a new technology, relatively new, yeah. and something that uh, affected so much of what we did on a daily basis yeah. at that time. Yeah. Um, I, th- I feel like as, as silly and as not of an event it was, I still can understand that one a little more. Yeah. Except for the, the televangelists that took advantage of it and, and right. Yeah. Okay. That side of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That side of it. Um, no, fuck them. Yeah. But I mean, from the thing about like, will this affect how these things work? Will, will some of these computers and banking systems just totally go to shit because of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I would, I don't want to say lazy programming, but just at the time, that's what was necessary. Yeah. It just wasn't good enough. But I know like for years, I, I heard a whole thing about, read a whole thing about this uh, where I was saying like for years before that people were constantly updating the code. So yeah. it probably wasn't going to happen because it was being addressed leading yeah. up to it and after as well. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, but no planes fell out of the sky, no. <laughs> which is another fear that they had. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much, you can pick any date in history. And, Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so there, somebody would have said God's returning next Tuesday. I'm not going to go through all of them. Some famous ones were the great disappointment that we've talked about a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, my birthday. Oh, hmm. <laughs> forgot my birthday again. You know, the great disappointment. Yeah. But yeah. And that one, uh, William Miller <laughs> said that, uh, in 1844 mm-hmm. that, uh, Christ would return. And he had a lot of followers in 1844. And yeah. That, that, believed him that on October 22nd, 1884, that, that Christ would return. And what happened? Um, not, not that I don't think he returned that I know of. Right. But I think some people would argue that he, there was a spiritual returning. That's usually how they twist it. Um, what if it's like that? What was that show? Um, uh, was it touched by an angel or it was like, what if God was one of us was the theme song? Or oh no! Of, not touched by any. It was something like that. Like Joan of Arc. Joan, Joan of Arcadia. Arcadia. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it, it didn't like God keep coming back as normal people. Yeah. And it's, maybe it was one of those maybe, situations. Maybe it was. Maybe that show was based on 1844 when yeah. he came back. As, it's possible as a dung. As a dung beetle. Oh, dung collector. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Actually, the show uh, The Leftovers, which is a really good show, mm-hmm. uh, the first episode of season three, they kind of go through and like show this. Um, oh. So, yeah, I don't think, I think they change names and stuff. Right. They, but it was. From God, they call him yeah, Alan. Alan. Alan will return <laughs> in 1844. <laughs> but they showed one family who just, every, every time there was a new date predicted, they would just be like, oh, okay, it's this one. Right. And the, and everybody else around them was like giving up on it. And they, they just kept every, every time it was that date, they would go up on top of the roof and wait. And <laughs> what is it, Santa Claus? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you go up on the roof and wait yeah. for him to come down with his eight tiny reindeer. Yeah. Um, but Seventh day Adventists came out of this, and some would argue the Jehovah's Witnesses um, as well. Right. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses have predicted the end of the world many, many times. Mm-hmm. I think in 1921 it was supposed to end, and it's basically a, a doomsday call. They keep I mean, pretty- if they spent less time knocking on doors and more time at the library reading up on shit, maybe this wouldn't happen. Exactly. Well, they do. They are against education pretty much, like higher right. education because you're 
you're wasting time that could be out saving people right. for, um, for the Lord. Yeah, that's a huge red flag for me yeah. when you're saying education isn't important. Yeah. Uh, that's That seems to be an, a really good like pillar of, uh, of a cult. Yeah, I'd say so. Is to keep them stupid and keep them afraid. Yep. Late Great Planet Earth was a book by a guy named Hal Lindsey. I think we talked about it on the uh, Jesus People episode. Uh-huh. And uh, it was basically a book saying that in the 1980s, Armageddon would happen. So this book came out in the 70s. Well... And it was in the 1990s that Armageddon came out. That's true. They were only off by they, a little yeah, bit, right? That's right. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to count that one. Uh, that yeah, one's I a hit. Say, that yeah. one, th- close enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Charles Taze Russell calculated, so he's the one that started the watch, the president of the Watchtower Society, which eventually became the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. They're the ones who hand out those magazines, right? Yeah. Like they stand two of them and... yeah. They just hand yeah. out magazines. Exactly, yeah. So that's that's the JWs. But he said 1874 would I mean, be the second coming. If they didn't discontinue Mad Magazine, I would I would do that. I would just stand and hand out those. Yeah, it's beside true. them. Mm-hmm. We should we could just buy a bunch of old Mad magazines. That's true. And hand them out. That's true. Yeah. So 1874, and then the resurrection of the saints in 1875, mm-hmm. and then again, like oops, sorry, 1878, and then oh sorry, uh, 1914. Each time they predict a new year, they change it when it doesn't, and the followers are like, okay. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm sure some people have left the church over it, but... Well, I mean, this is like people waiting for Half-Life 3 to come out. Yeah. You know, maybe in 2002, maybe Mm -hmm. in 2003, maybe in 2004, and it just never happens. Yeah. And now some people are given, have completely given up hope, Mm. so... It'll never happen. Maybe, uh, hey, everybody, don't give up hope. I mean, depending what it is. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm just saying that there's more chance of Half-Life 3 coming out than Christ returning, based right. on statistics. Yeah, I I would have to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Pat Robertson, mm-hmm. our friend. Our old friend, boy, yeah. friend Pat. <laughs> yeah, friend of the show, Pat Robertson, our boy. Um, what was his name again, his actual name? Because like, uh, I know they call him Pat because his brother used to pat him on the head. Marion. Mary, I was going to say something like mm-hmm. Leslie or Ashley. I, yeah. I don't know why I felt it was going to be a name where he would want to choose something more, uh, quote unquote, masculine. Yeah. <laughs> and he went with Pat. Uh, a year of sorrow and bloodshed will have no end soon. The world is apart from my kingdom shall rise and, and the ruins of it. This was in 1980. Wait, so he was predicting uh, massacres and bloodshed? Yeah. And that's what would bring forth the second coming? Yeah. And then in 1982, the Great Tribulation would begin in October or November of 1982, following the invasion of Israel by the Soviet Union. That was a big one in the uh, 80s, was they kept saying that the Bible says that Russia will invade Israel. Well... And and then that'll show the end of time. I mean... That's kind of what Rambo 3 was about, wasn't it? Oh, that was Afghanistan, though. Oh, yeah, that's true. But it was the Russians. Yeah. In 1996, he said that Jay Rockefeller yeah. uh, would be elected president of the United States and uh, that he'd become the Antichrist. Wait, so he becomes president and then becomes the Antichrist? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2007, he said... Oh, wow. Okay, so it's 40 years since the Six-Day War and 400 years since the founding of Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. So he had a whole mathematical thing saying that in 2007 based on 400 years since Jamestown and 40 years since the Six-Day War that that would be the end of the world. Are these just arbitrary dates that he's using? Yeah. There's no... Yeah, yeah, sure, it's 400 years since then, but... Because you picked a date 400 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And what does 400... What's the significance of 400? <laughs> there, There is no significance. Yeah. That's the problem. Uh, another famous one was Harold Camping. Remember him? Harold Camping? Yeah. Like Harold was camping? No. Oh, well, yeah, I guess he, oh, he probably was. Harold Camping over there. <laughs> but he, uh, he's the host of a radio, the radio station. He had these mathematical things figured out that okay jesus died in 33 a.d and there's these lunar month calendars which are 29.53 days so that's one cycle and then there's the gregorian uh calendar of the tropical year and then there's the jewish feast and then you can do math and then here we go it's 1994 god's coming back in 1994 and people sold their belongings and 
um, went around telling everybody, hey, it's going to happen in 1984. Um, can you Google whether it happened? I'm going to look that up right yeah. now. Um, but then again, in 2011, he came back and he said, no, it, it, I was wrong with 1994. It was a, it's actually going to end in May May 21st of 2011. Oh, so I should stop looking this up? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if Jesus came back in 94... Oh, uh, well, 94 was designated the International Year of the Family and the International Year of Sport and the Olympic Ideal by the United Nations. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds nice. That's almost like God came back. Oh, NAFTA was established. Oh, didn't so, Kurt Cobain die, though? In 94? Yeah. He might have. Yeah. That Do one. you remember when this was all going around in 2011? Um, a, About the world ending? Yeah. Not specifically. I feel like a lot of that stuff, you would hear about it on and off. The only reason I remember the, the Aztec Mayan thing, I think, was because they came out with a movie about it that yeah, I also didn't movie. watch. Yeah. So. Um, I remember, because it came up in my memories this last May, in my Facebook memories, that the day before I said, uh, Jesus is coming tomorrow, put out milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jerry Falwell said that in 1999 that Christ would return within the next 10 years. Christ would return within the next 10 years? Yeah. So Jerry Falwell said that in 1999, and a lot of people said in the year 2000. Isaac Newton was one of them who said that in the year 2000, uh, that would be the end of it. Have you heard of Jack Van Impey? Uh, the name's familiar. Okay. He had a, a Sunday morning show, uh-huh. and it was like a, a news style show. But what he would do is he would take world events, and every week he would break down how the world was ending and what are the signs based on the news. And he had this show for years, which should have been a sign, but he, um, 2012 was big for him. Like that was like, that was the big one. That was the big one where, you know, the hype train was real. The hype train was real that year. And then it came to station and, uh, nothing got off. Yep, exactly. (laughs) Let's talk about some other non world ending prophecies. Yeah. Cause, um, as I checked, the world hasn't ended. Yeah. Uh, looking outside. Still there. Um, we do have big problems, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing to do with uh, the Lord or whatnot. Um, but still, we're, we're, we're dealing with it. Exactly. And if we die, it's because of our own gross incompetence as a species. Exactly. We got this on our own, folks. Yes. We do not need God to we do it. We did not need his help to fuck up <laughs> our world. It's true. I'm just saying we should have pride in the accomplishments of our species. We, yep. you know, we did it on our own. We did it. We don't need a higher power to ruin everything for us mm-hmm. because of, uh, I don't know, uh, gay marriage or whatever yeah. they say it is because of. Yeah, it's usually gay marriage or no, uh, it's because, abortion. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. We did it, and we didn't have to blame it on anyone mm-hmm. except us. Except ourselves, yeah. And then, you know what? I'm fine with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joseph Smith, founder of the Mormons, had some prophecies. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the whole thing. I guess it wasn't a prophecy. He was he, he was, read the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Which wasn't a prophecy. Or was it a prophecy? I guess. No, it was like a history with... I think there was prophecy probably in it, but there was also... like It was a history of yeah. how the Jews sailed in giant canoes to America and then became... Native Americans because they sinned. Wasn't in, didn't Jesus live in America? Yeah, he came and visited. I think if they had called the, in. if they had called the Book of Mormon American Jesus, I think it would have been much yeah. more popular. Yeah, I like that song by uh, by Bad Religion American Jesus too. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Are they Mormons? Bad Religion? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe <laughs> they don't. Maybe they don't even know it. If uh, if you're listening, Bad Religion, let us know. Yeah, if you are Mormons. If you're not, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to conflate that. I was just wondering, because you had a song about American Jesus. Yeah. So, think about it. Mormon Jesus. Send send us a letter, believe it or not. Uh, He said that uh, Missouri, they would uh, be able to purchase Missouri, and it would become the Mormon Zion, and be everlasting, the everlasting Mormon uh, place, uh, Missouri. They bought a different state. Yeah, they instead. they they went with Salt Lake City. I mean, they didn't they didn't buy it, did they? They no, they just claimed it. Right. Yeah. Uh, New York. No one else wanted to go there. Exactly. They said that New York and Boston will be destroyed if they reject the Mormon gospel. I mean, again, like what you said earlier, 
He didn't give a timeline. Yeah, so it could be any time. Yeah. By that time, there might not be a Mormonism. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I I hope that the city of New York outlasts the religion of Mormonism, but I mean, who knows? You could say that about a lot of things, but mm-hmm. it's still here. Yeah. About reg, uh, regular Christianity mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said that, I prophesy in the name of the Lord God of Israel, unless the United States redress wrongs committed upon the saints in the state of Missouri and punish the crimes committed by her officers, that in a few years the government will be utterly overthrown and wasted, and there will not be so much as a, post, a pot's herd left for the wicked. So it seems like they wanted an apology, and it's like, if we don't get our apology, then I predict all these cities will be dead. Yeah. What a petty little whiny bitch thing to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can I say that? I don't know. You can say that. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, this guy named David Wilkerson. So he wrote this book called The Cross and the Switchblade, um, in which he he was a white savior who went in and to the inner city right. and converted inner city like, youths. Yeah, like that movie where the teacher comes in and teaches them all to read. Yeah, using rap. Yeah, <laughs> or play basketball. Yeah. Yeah, so that was him, but he he made a number of uh, prophecies about in in the seventies about disasters happening in New York City if they don't repent of their mm-hmm. of their sin. Did he, they repent? I guess so because they didn't happen. Oh, okay. But he also predicted the like a worldwide economic depression in the eighties mm-hmm. and uh, and the nineties, and uh, in March of two thousand nine, he. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's the one. So that's the New York one. In March of 2009, he said he got a message from the Holy Spirit that an earth-shattering calamity is about to happen. It will engulf the whole megaplex, including areas of New Jersey and Connecticut. Major cities all across America will be experiencing riots and blazing fires, such as we saw in uh, Watts, Los Angeles years ago. There will be riots, fires in the city worldwide. There will be looting, including Times Square in New York. Uh, What we are experiencing now is not a recession, not... Not even a depression. We are under God's wrath. So that was after like the 2008 collapse. So like they were right. still financial. Yeah. But yeah. So he's saying that it happened because of God? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And that there would be, yeah, basically the whole city would be engulfed in flames. and I'm pretty sure and, that a lot of these things that they're blaming on God, you can go back and find out what really happened. Yeah. Very easily. Very easily. Yeah. Yeah. It's documented yeah. what happened. A lot of, uh, as well, a lot of uh, televangelists and stuff made predictions about, well, they, every every election they, they'll make predictions about yeah. what, who God told them will win. So some are going to be right, some are going to be wrong. I mean, what is that? Like a 50-50 chance? Yeah, especially? exactly. Like yeah. usually it's a two-party system. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about some failed coronavirus prophecies. Because that's topical. Lay it on me. A pastor named Sean Bowles tweeted the following. The Lord showed me the end of the coronavirus. I would like to point out this is on February 28th of this year, of 2020. So early on. Yeah. The Lord showed me the end of the coronavirus. The tide is turning now. He is answering the prayers and cries of the nations and is putting an end in sight. The exaggerated fear-based tactics of both the enemy and several media outlets for political reasons is coming to an end. The enemy has been trying to distract and steal from the several equally important purposes and issues by dominating airwaves with conspiracy and fear. Even now, va- as several vaccines are coming out, as well as natural as natural dying out of the virus itself, the Lord is saying, I am removing the threat of this. Within a short amount of time, the extreme threat will feel like it was way in the past. This was in February. Okay. So one, he was wrong about it. Two, um, he was saying that God was coming in to rid us of this disease. My question is, why did God unleash the disease in the first place? Yeah. Then. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I saw one thing. It was like, either God knew the coronavirus was coming and mm-hmm. didn't do anything. He didn't know the coronavirus was coming. Or he created the coronavirus yeah my thing is it, that's like saying like your house catches on fire and then you thank god when the fire gets put out by the fire department yeah you're like, thank you god well he, if he controls all this if he has the power to stop the fire yeah why wouldn't you have just prevented it yeah in the exactly. first place yeah like, i mean let's try and teach you a lesson 
He's all powerful, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like when you know people thank God that their surgery was a success. And so like, thank the doctors. Yeah, the doctor, the did medical that. team who yeah. trained hard to work to do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> There's this guy named TB Joshua. He's a <laughs> Nigerian uh, con artist, pastor, and he has. Uh, he's just like always prophesying insane things. But right. what he said about the coronavirus is that it would end on March 27th and it is still going strong. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he also said that Hillary Clinton would win the election in 2016. And when she didn't, he said she won the popular vote. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kenneth Copeland, our friend Kenneth Copeland said it wouldn't last very long at all and that God would destroy it way sooner than you think. He said this on March 13th. <laughs> right. I, I just don't know why you would want to weigh in like that. On yeah. Things. I mean, I, I get what I do get why they are, but at the same time, it's just like, what's, what's the point? Yeah. Cause if you're wrong, you just look like a moron. Yeah. But even if for whatever reason you're right, is that really going to add that much credibility to anything that you're doing yeah like, exactly really like it'll yeah it'll win over some people and i think a lot of people thought that it would end quickly and they they yeah. probably assumed like oh by saying this we're just gonna be but, able to but my thing with that though is that you're not converting anyone new with that i'm mm-hmm. sure you all you're doing is reaffirming the people who already listen and believe you yeah exactly so yeah you're trying to trick the dummies who already believe you you're not trying to bring anyone new in so why yeah. Why say something like it to begin with? And and the thing too with with Copeland is he's done many times where he's like casting out the demon of coronavirus. He keeps doing it all throughout this thing, yeah. Starting on the thirteenth of March, but he hasn't stopped doing it. And uh, there's an amazing remix everybody needs to watch that is so catchy. Maybe I can throw it on here. I don't know if I can. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll put a, a link to yeah, it. Yeah, we'll put a link. I'll I'll look into maybe just putting it at the end of the episode. But mm-hmm. it's uh, he was casting out the demon of COVID-19. Right. And well, uh, I might have seen this one. <laughs> and they remixed it, and it is so freaking catchy. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So there's also been a number of things that have just been claimed to be fulfilling of prophecy that when you look into it, it's like they just made up the prophecy and then made up the fulfillment and then said it was fulfilled. Like <laughs> It's like post hoc. Yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, David Wilkerson, the guy who... Uh, predicted the end, like the riots and stuff. He's a go-to with these hoaxes. So for some reason, they'll use his name. There was one where this story was around on the internet for a long time where his, because he has a church in New York City that he, on the 10th, he phoned a bunch of people in his church and asked if we could all organize um, sandwiches and food and refreshments because mm-hmm. we're going to need, there's something happening where people are going to need food tomorrow unexpectedly. And it's like, the church denies this ever happened. Yeah. He denies this ever happened. And also, like, God's warning you about 9-11 by telling you to make sandwiches. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. He, what do you mean he denied it ever happened? So, like, someone else is saying that Someone else is this? saying that he right. said this, yeah. Okay, so other people are just using his name yeah. to say things happen, and he doesn't know why they're doing yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I think because he's... People like him. I he's guess. He's incredible. He's not... He's... He wrote a book in 73 and then he came out in 2009 with these prophecies or whatever. Uh-huh. But that's not his main thing. Right. So he's not like every day making prophecies. Yeah. So maybe they think that like he's he hasn't been debunked as many as much yeah. as other so people. Now it's like, so. Why is this my fault? I yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we were playing we were playing a board game uh, on Colin's birthday and yeah. part of it is taking different territories and stuff. And I didn't think I was going to win this one, so yeah. I didn't do anything basically. And I won it. And then everyone got mad at me for winning it. I was like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, I just won the game. But yeah, any other thoughts on prophecy? You know what? I couldn't have predicted this was going to happen today. Yeah. <laughs> Prophecies, uh, there's no such thing. It yeah. doesn't mean anything. It's all a guess. And the thing about guesses is that sometimes they're right. Yeah. That does not mean that it was a prophecy. Yeah, exactly. It just means you got lucky. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's, yeah. And like we said earlier, it's counting the hits, ignoring the misses. And yeah. I mean, people can make predictions. A prediction is different than a prophecy. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you're going to be using real life information to make these predictions. Yeah. Yeah. You're using statistics like what's more likely to happen. Yeah. 
So, but if you're making prophecies, get the heck out of yeah. town. Get out of here. Should we do a Christian rock lyric? Let's do a Christian rock lyric. Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. Uh, Larry Norman, uh, this is the song I learned when I was a kid from a movie called uh, Thief in the Night, which was a movie about the end of the world, about Uh-oh. the rapture, and then what happens after the rapture. Mm-hmm. And it uh, scared the shit out of me. And which I think is the point of all the end of the world predictions is to scare the shit out of you to convert so that if you yeah. if you get raptured before all the bad things happen, then then you're happy. And it's to scare you into obedience. Yep. That's all it is, yep. people. So this is a, a song called I Wish We'd All Been Ready by Larry Norman, which is a very well produced song. And I... Does it, does it slap? It, yeah, it, well, it's it's like sad, and and he has like this beautiful almost so, falsetto voice. So it doesn't. Yeah, sound. I I was listening to Larry Norman today, and I took a shower and came out and forgot that it was I was still listening to Larry Norman, and I thought it was just like on all music shuffle, and I was like, oh, who is this Bob Dylan? No, it's not Bob Dylan. It's from that era. And then I was like, there was a line about uh, we put God, we trust on our money, but outlaw prayer in school. I'm like, it's Larry Norman. <laughs> Didn't Dylan do a few Christian albums? He did. Too, yeah, he so. did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so this is, I wish we'd all been ready. Life was filled with guns and war and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. Children died. The days grew cold. A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. And that's about the rapture. That's about the rapture. I would, uh, you could probably argue that a lot of that happens every day in uh, Mm -hmm. different parts of the world. Yep. Um, because of conflict and war, often in times because of religious persecution. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, which is why throughout history yeah. people thought they, I've always thought they're in the other times, like if things get really worse, like even yeah. with coronavirus, like uh-huh. the amount of people say, who joke that it's the apocalypse or say we're at, in the end of the world. It's mm-hmm. like, I mean, I've listened to the end of the world as we know way more this <laughs> last couple months than I have in the yeah. months before. But um, cause he gets, and I've often said too, that post-apocalyptic movies are just things that are happening other places in the world, but played by white people. Right. <laughs> like, uh, this is fine. Yeah. Everything is fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to get through this. It'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not ideal, yeah. but uh, the Corona thing could have been much, much worse. Yeah. So. And in some places, it is much, much worse because yeah. the government in those countries, I'm not pointing any fingers in America, um, <laughs> aren't doing what they could be doing. But yeah. Keep that border closed, please. Yeah. Please. But yeah, thanks everyone for um, listening to our prophecies. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can predict what uh, the next episode will be. Mm-hmm. Prophesize Ooh, that. Well, we should have told people that we recorded this over a year ago and that we didn't even know what coronavirus was, but uh, God, yeah. God told us. We were filming this July 27th, 2019. 2019, baby. COVID-19. 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 I'm gone. The You don't do it. You don't do it. You don't do it. You get it. Work, 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 Sky Moon. Day or the world's returning right. next Tuesday. Um, the world. The, or the world, the, the world's ending, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Did I say the world's returning? Yeah. yeah. Where'd it go? Uh, we're obviously not on planet Earth anymore. We're in right. assimilation right, 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 on right. a spaceship. I love being in assimilation. <laughs> yeah.